been, oh, we have been discussing and talking about the foundation of life. And we're using this book by Lene Carroll called The Architecture of All Abundance in every form. Today, it happens if you didn't catch on already, it's about health. We're going to look at the architecture of health. So at a nursing home in Miami, a group of seniors were sitting around talking about all their ailments. Maybe you found yourself in something like this? My arms have gotten so weak I can hardly lift this cup of coffee, said one. Yes, I know, said the other. My cataracts are so bad I can't even see the cup of coffee. I can't turn my head because of the arthritis in my neck said another, to which a few nodded. My blood pressure pills are making me so dizzy, explained, exclaimed another. I guess that's the price we pay for getting up in the years, once an old man. Well, we need to remember, said another, to count our blessings and just be grateful that we can still drive, and if not drive, that we can wake up each day and enjoy a new day, because that is a matter of thought, as we're gonna find out today. Physical healing was the cornerstone in the birth of the New Thought Movement, which is what this is, New Thought Religious Science. And it, this is in the early to mid-1800s. Well, we talk about Phineas Quimby, who is believed to have been the father of New Thought. He had a spiritual awakening as a result of a buggy ride that he took when he was near death with consumption and TB. A friend suggested that he might feel better if he got outside in some fresh air. So despite his very weakened condition, Quimby hooked the horse up and the buggy and took a ride. In the course of the ride, the horse got spooked and began to gallop out of control. And when Quimby finally stabilized and with some effort stopped the horse, he took a couple of really deep breaths and he realized that he felt alive, he felt invigorated. He felt ready to move on with life. And this led him, this is true, this led him to a deep and profound, to a deep and profound mental state of being, where he realized that our thoughts are truly connected with our physical state. And because of his work and this manuscript he has written, he was influential in beginning the New Thought Movement. And by the way, he came back from the brink of death and enjoyed quite a few more years to follow in health. And I, I think about this, and I think about, we go to Unity Village for our affiliated New Thought Network conference, our parent group, if you will. And that was started by Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. Myrtle Fillmore was dying, literally. And in the living room of the small house that they lived in, in St. Louis, she began working on healing her thoughts. And in that beginning of healing her thoughts became this huge movement of unity. And any of us that have been to Unity Village in St. Louis, Missouri, know that this is it's unbelievable. This one woman in her living room, and now this is a whole city called Unity Village, and it truly is a city. It's amazing. It came from one thought, to heal the body. Regarding our health, we have in New Thought two cornerstone beliefs. The first one is that there is nothing to heal, only innate perfection to reveal. And the second one is exactly the belief, well, that's not it, the second one. Um, yeah, it is. The second one is to check our thoughts and see what we are feeling and, and how it is affecting our physical state. Where are we stuck? Are we hanging out with people like the group in Miami? 
<laughs> Sitting around complaining about my aches and my pains, or are we on the journey of healing, of becoming more and more of this health we talk about? That's, oh boy, that's, that's, that's my absolute mission in life, to continuously heal this physical form so that I can express more of the spirit within me. And I, I truly have proven that over and over again to myself, as I know many of you have. Lenadra Carroll, the author of the book, said, slowly and surely I have achieved wellness and vitality by building from the original blueprint of health that is embedded in my soul. The original blueprint of health that is embedded in my soul. I love that. Embedded in each of our souls is a blueprint, a divine blueprint of absolute well-being, of wholeness, nothing missing. And the second, our thinking profoundly affects our physical state of being. This is no longer just religious or a spiritual belief. In fact, through a lot of scientific research, and delving into the way our physical universe operates, renowned physicist David Bowen, you can look him up on YouTube, he's got there's some really great video of him, B-O-H-M. He believes there is a deeper and non-local level of existence from which our entire universe springs. So this morning, we are going to be talking about that attitude of gratitude of that health that wealth that was sung so beautifully, and how our thoughts and our state of being truly affected and how we can heal ourselves. So creation begins in the subtlest levels. It gets a little um, quantum physics and beyond today, but I want us to really try to move into this because it's, it's so powerful and there's so many videos and books and, and essays and everything written about uh, how this science truly affects us. It's, it's, it's powerful. It changes our DNA. He writes, so Bowen, he <laughs> sees this on a deeper level of existence comprised entirely of waveforms of different kinds as what he refers to as implicate order. The, that means the originator, cohesive force of the cosmos. Bone's research led him to understand that it is our intention and imagination that affect the creation of form. He writes, every action starts from an intention in the implicate order. The imagination already has the intention and all of the movements needed to carry it out. And it affects the body because these bodies are the form. They are the matter, matter, these bodies that are filled with energy. So creation begins at the subtlest level of the implicate order. Then it goes through the more subtle levels until it manifests in the outer as what we know as matter. In other words, he is saying that the manifestation in the physical levels occur by intention imagination and thought moving until it manifests in matter, such as the body. This shows in a very real way our thoughts create our reality. This is from Lynn Lin Ager's book, most of this is today. Because she has one chapter on the architecture of health that is absolutely astounding. It is so, it's so good, it really is. Our thoughts create our reality. Have we heard anything like that before in our teachings? <laughs> Every spiritual truth teacher has spoken of this. More and more doctors and scientists are studying the ability of thought to bring about healing. One psychologist, Jeannie Ochterberg, while head of research and rehabilitation science at the University of Texas, helped validate this and develop imagery, imagery healing techniques. The techniques widely used in medicine now we hear it and in sports. You know, the athletes are doing this visualization. Using a group of college students, 
Octoberg taught them to imagine a white cell known as neutrophil, and she trained a second group of students to visualize another white cell, T cells. And they, they imaged, and the other group, there was three groups, the other group did not increase any white cells at all. The first two groups did. They increased through their thought and imagination. It's, I have more. This, it's my, this is a lot today, but I want to get this through because I need to hear it. You might need to hear it too, but I need to hear it. So when I did the thing I was never going to do, had this um, back surgery last September, because I, I was going to heal it other ways, but God knew better, so I listened. I listened to the body. So it, it helped relieve that pain, but still, there's a bone out, so there's still pain, it looks like. And I go to an osteopath, uh, osteopath who told me to imagine my, and this is what I've been doing, imagine my spine and my vertebrae aligning up. Just see it in my mind every single day, several times a day. And this you can use in anything. Imagine, just see it, a perfect spine, <laughs> incredible spine, that there is nothing to heal. Only that power within us to reveal. Dr. O. Carl Simonson uses such techniques with patients, the visualization. While a radiation, and this is coming from her book, these are a few statistics, but while a radiation oncologist and medical director of the Cancer Counseling and Research Center in Dallas, he suggested to a patient that he could influence his own disease. A patient, the patient was a 61-year-old man with throat cancer, so advanced that he was extremely weak and could barely swallow or even breathe, had a 5% chance of surviving. Simonton taught the man the very specific visualization therapy. And the results were so dramatic and the recovery so remarkable that Simonton and his colleagues taught this mental imaging technique to 159 other cancer patients considered incurable. Four years later, 14 of those terminal patients were disease free. 17 had stabilized, and in the number 12, the cancer was regressing. Altogether, an astonishing 63, 63 of these patients were still alive and really thriving in their health. The body is responsive to our thoughts. If I can't get that across, to myself as well as to you, then I can teach this, this theory that our thoughts are truly creative, that we can heal ourselves. The divine loving energy within us heals us. Carol writes, a thought laid down repetitively in the pliable wave fields of the body create a body memory or a habit, a pattern, Unless this pattern is interrupted at the thought level, it will ultimately manifest in the physical as an interruption of the natural health of the body. Form follows thought, she says. The body is taking this information, I'm quoting her, and direction from our thoughts continuously. The prime tone of thoughts directly affects our physical health. We are healers, each and every one of us. We are so powerful. We say this every week, but we truly are. And this is how thought filled with fear and worry and self-hatred and stress, anger, frustration, rob us of our health. So I say to people, don't watch the news every day. There's a reason I say that. I know how I feel when I watch it. I'm just like, oh, so I don't watch it. And here's a little good news slash bad news. We can change our thoughts much faster than our bodies change since they are far denser. 
This is matter, it's denser. In other words, it can take some time in our world of time and space, which is an illusion, for the body to catch up. The good news is that it allows us to recognize and interrupt the thoughts that may be causing the difficulty down the road. The bad news is that it also accounts for why when we have an understanding and correction of an unhealthy pattern, the physical change might not immediately occur. The body needs to catch up with the thoughts, the original thoughts that caused the illness anyway. What often happens with us is that we become discouraged, right? We pray, we're not healed, what's going on? We become discouraged and give up quickly. If a healing takes, takes if a healing takes too long, we, we sometimes give up and go back to that old way of thinking and being, which created the situation in the first place. This is like taking a car from California to New York, getting lost in Las Vegas, and saying, well, I better go back to California. Instead of, instead of rerouting, rerouting, as all that is required of our thoughts is to reroute. No matter how many times we lose our way while changing an unhealthy pattern. I don't usually talk about health, but I, I'm going to really talk about it today. So hang with me on this because I really think we can use this. I really do. By communicating consciously and lovingly with our body, there is really no limit, no limit to its capacity to respond. It can bring about our renewal to pull health, heighten our reality, and even slow aging. That's why I look so fabulous. I just slowed down aging. I decided I'm just going to age gracefully. So, but it's all thoughts. It's all thinking. You see? We can do this, we can do this. The body, this is um, from Dr. Ellen Jensen, I get so excited. And she, she addressed the need to purify our mental processes and this is what she wrote. The body is a magnificent creation of God. It comes equipped with an innate intelligence and a powerful energy to heal itself when given the opportunity. Keeping the mind free of debilitating thoughts is necessary to access the energy and intelligence. Feelings such as guilt, worry, fear, and anger can drain us of this vital energy that is so essential for the highest quality of health and life. It can be difficult, no doubt, to interrupt these obsessive thoughts. You ever notice your thoughts? Oh, do a mind check, what I call a mind check every once in a while. It's like, whoa, was I really thinking that? No wonder. To interrupt these obsessive thoughts, when Lenadra Carroll was trying to make strides in her ability to discipline herself and her mind, this is her mind, she found the habit so deeply ingrained that it seemed hopeless. It was at the end of a relationship. Her mind replayed over and over again the painful scenes of the breakup with her boyfriend and the fears of the future. Maybe some of us can relate to that. Either someone passes away or we break up and we, we just play the scenario over and over and over again and then we get afraid of the future. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna you know what the mind does. It was so compelling, though. This is a story about what happened to her and how she recuperated. It was so compelling that she couldn't remember anything else to think about. Anyone ever feel that? You get so obsessed with the story that you're in that story 24-7, you don't dream about it. When she asked herself to, so to remedy this, she made flashcards for herself. And on them, she wrote several thoughts, what I would call affirmations, and she posted them around her house. She posted them. I know that we have done this kind of thing. And it, I can't even, 
I do say it all the time, but affirmations, it's a new thought, are so powerful. They are so powerful. I am, I didn't get a great night's sleep last night, very unusual. So I woke up this morning going, oh my God, I'm gonna be tired, I have so much to do today, I have to go here and here, I gotta deliver a talk, and I, and I said, you're talking on health, Margaret, because you gotta have a good talk with yourself, you do. You're talking about health today, you're gonna practice what you preach. So I started coming for the affirmation, I am filled with divine vitality. It surges through my body. There is no tiredness in God. So this perfect health is my health now. That's why I love these songs. They were all perfect for me to walk in and to hear. I'm filled with vitality. And she referred to these affirmations over and over again. So when I first came into these teachings, that's what I did. I had affirmations written all over the place. But now we have to ask ourselves a burning question that many of us truth spiritual students have asked ourselves when a, when a health issue arises. And I, I've, I've had many clients that have said this, so I know this is true. What did I do wrong? <laughs> How, what was I thinking to cause this illness? And I try to steer them as I steer myself, because I don't even go there. I say, it is what it is. What can I do now? What is the solution? How can I guide myself? Because that spiritual guilt does nothing but make everything worse. So midway through Lenadra's, um, she was traveling with her daughter, Pop Singer Jewel, and she was very, very, very busy, worn out, they both were, badly in need of a rest and recuperation. So she heard about a beautiful retreat, a lodge, a health lodge in New Zealand, and she booked it for a few days for them. She showered quickly, it's like she's still rushing to get on with this, at the hotel, mentally preparing for the trip. The phone rang, gotta answer the phone. And as she stepped out of the shower, the next thing she was remembered was hearing a frightening, loud, guttural voice, a cry that seemed to be coming from somewhere far away. Someone help us, she thought to herself. She's hurt. She did not realize that the sound was coming from her. She had fallen on the wet tile floor, slashing her right temple across, she hit her temple across the doorknob. And then the fall left her with a quite noticeable difficulties. In addition to a severe concussion, lateral whiplash, she suffered frequent episodes of ringing in her ears, followed by blackouts. There was damage to a blood vessel above her right ear, which affected her balance, suffering the chronic spasm in her right shoulder, and it goes on. She lost 80% of her range of motion. She wrote this about it. We often wonder what we did wrong when such things occur in our lives, feeling guilty, thinking we did not get it, we didn't get it right. We ask why, Bad question. We ask why we fell, get cancer, catch a cold, have a toothache. What was I thinking? The question why, she says, can have you nagging that something you did was wrong. As we become more conscious of the connection between our emotions, our living habits, and our bodies, we may even add derogatory judgment to the process. There is a chance that we have gone from making no connection, taking no self-responsibility, to blaming ourselves. We blame ourselves for a lot of things. We really do. How many can relate to that? Can you? Can you? Yes. Yes. We feel that somehow if we were more conscious, if we more, were more spiritually enlightened, then this bad thing would not have happened at all. We take the internal blame for what has happened, and we get into that self-judgment, even self-loathing sometimes. And this does not serve or support us in any way. It clogs up our clarity and our wisdom. Balance, 
and conscious assessment of, an, of any experience, it gets, it gets stopped, it gets stopped. So it is important, she says, to connect with our thoughts and feelings and our body. We have to acknowledge, we have to acknowledge, okay, this has happened, I feel this, I feel that. You're in that feeling state to acknowledge it, but then to go to that higher place that knows that with every problem, with every illness, with any of that comes a solution. It comes in with it. We are divine expressions that God self runs through us. We are, we are limitless in our thoughts as well as every other area of our lives. So instead of saying, what did I do wrong? We can say, how can I bring myself back to what I know is true? that I am whole, I am safe, I am perfect, I'm a perfect manifestation of the divine life of God itself. That is who I am, that is who each and every person is. And this is how it went with our heroine, Lenadra. She naturally worried, she wondered about her injury. When she asked her body, learn to do that folks, learn to ask your body. The intelligence in the body has guided me so much more than any doctor could ever guide me. Doctors are great. They've done wonderful things for me, some of them. But that intelligence within me, the guides, that is your innate, divine intelligence moving you forward. Listen to it. It knows the truth. So she had just been through that long and intense work period she was, this is her, she was tired and hard pressed to find time for rest and recreation. She began to seek knowledge for her recovery. Through the nearly three years of the healing process, her focus was not, was not on the difficulties. She did not overlook or deny them. She experienced them and moved through and she felt them, but her focus was on what can be done to recover. What can be done to recover. The injuries were serious, but she knew her body would regenerate. The incident served as an impetus for her to commit to a more active lifestyle, strengthen her body for the tours that she was taking. And she also reconstructed her schedule to allow for more rest and relaxation. It's about balance, balance. And two and a half, almost three years that it took, she is now operating at full capacity of her body. In fact, she writes that she feels so much better than she did before the injury. It's balance. I hear a lot of people get stressed out because there's no balance. And so I want to end this talk <laughs> with this beautiful reading from her about healing, about the beauty and the power. She wrote, I have not come to health by wishing for it, by laying myself into the hands of others, or by ignoring the problems that were affecting it. I tried all these approaches, of course, without success. I count my health today from the moments when ill, dying, or suffering physically that I realized that I had the wisdom within me for my healing. I count my health today from the times I look kindly but unflinchingly at myself and began to change the thoughts and the habits that did not serve me. Count, I count my health from the blueprint that already exists in my soul. So if we get nothing else from this talk today, it is about spiritually, truly recognizing the power of who we are and know that within our soul, within our very being is that blueprint for health. It's there, my friends. It will guide you. I trust in it, I listen to it, and I, I absolutely know it for absolutely everyone here. No one is left out in God's plan, and so it is. So it is.